and this is what I found the other day. Hiya. Hi. Filming in public is always fun. I'm like replacing a charger that was burnt out. Two things are happening today. The first thing is I'm gonna whip off this Indra charger, which burnt out, which I showed last week. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave that video in the description below. And we're gonna have an in-depth look and see where it has failed. And I'm gonna try and get hold of technical and see if they can talk me through why this has happened and if it's a known problem. And job number two is I'm installing this new Anderson EV charger, which costs 995 pounds, which is a lot of money. First things first, make sure the charger is isolated. Never assume. I always do my absolute best to read all of your comments and reply to them if I can. And every now and then, one of you gentlemen come up with an absolute belter of a tip, which I'm gonna show you today. And I pointed out in my last video that when you take these screws out or undo these screws, they never come out. And when you take the front cover off, I always lose them. And one of you, clever lot, suggested that you take a little bit of tape and once they're undone, put the tape over the screw hole, which will stop you losing the screws. You just gotta hope that you've undone them all properly. I found the easiest way to work on these is to unclip this ribbon and actually remove the whole front door by these little screws here. Lost that one. That way, if you are installing one of these, you're not gonna scratch this up where it's falling all over the place or smashing against the wall. I know I bang on about these D-line clips quite a lot, but the great thing about them is that if you need to do a job like this, they unclip so easily and they stay in place. So it's dead easy to remove the cable and reinstall it. Like so. And then this should just lift off. So looking at this, we have these lever connections, which that one's okay, but these two don't seem to want to go up. So I'm just going to remove these and we can see that we have definitely a burnt live conductor there, but it looks like the module behind is where the main problem is. And if we look at the board here, it looks like this line conductor, which comes through this CT on that piece there, I reckon that is where the problem originated. The way I think something to bear in mind is that the EV charging market is relatively new. And I think this was the first model that Indra done of this charger. And no product is perfect straight away. And the only way that products and manufacturers can improve is by finding these issues and rectifying them. So all I can say is Indra have been fantastic about this. They've offered me loads of advice. They sent out a charger straight away and you can't fault that. Nothing really bad came of this. The protection I installed done its job. So there was no incidents whatsoever apart from this basically failing. And you can't ask more than that from a company, I don't think. This is not how the charger turned up, by the way. My customers very carefully opened it up and had a look. I've definitely got a new model of the Indra Charger here, so I'm gonna find up technical and find out what's new and let you know. But I'm on hold again. Compliments to the on hold music though, it's better than most. So this is the old makeup and this is the new one. And I am super pleased that I leave my cables longer because we have these clips here, which are identified as live, neutral and earth to route your cables around into the terminals. So that's a nice little touch. And they do that with the Indra Lux as well. I'm good, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. How can we help? Uh, just a quick one. I'm like replacing a charger that was burnt out that um, I identified last week. And I've got your new one here. Excellent. And, and what I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about it, if that's all right. Of course. So I can see the makeup of it's like newer and it looks good. Can you tell me much about it? On the front panel, can you see what looks like Wi-Fi signals on it. On the front panel? On the front 
panel on the front where the boost button is. Yes. There is, there's like a Wi Fi yeah. signals on it. Okay, so it's the Gen 2 model. So this is our newer model. Okay. Can I get the postcode to this unit? Just give me one moment. I'm just going to populate the ticket. Be right back with you. Okay. Thank you, mate. Once again, Indra answered within a couple of minutes. Super helpful. So this is the new Gen. So this is the Gen 2 version of our unit now. This comes preemptively loaded with the firmware 11. Okay. Okay. Firmware 11 allows us to have a new compatibility mode with the Wi Fi. We can now pair with the customer's network name rather than WPS. Okay. So a lot better for connection uh, and stability. Uh, gives you a lot further range as well than obviously WPS. Next thing, do you have the new install app? Already installed or not yet? I do I do have the installer app. On app logo, I've got white and blue Indra on it, and it's just called Indra Installer app. That'll be the one. Excellent. Yeah, so that'll be the one that we can use now to enter the customer's network name. Okay. Just be aware that you will need to log into the Wi-Fi on your phone to do so because it connects sure. the SSID through the phone as well. Okay. okay. Apart from that, yeah. Okay, give us a call back when that new unit's on the wall, and uh, we should have the RMA ready. Has any of the components been changed at all in this unit? So the Wado clips have been improved, um, so we shouldn't experience something that you had with okay. this old unit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a few other things. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly, um, as I'm not down in the in the warehouse. That's right. Uh, making them myself, but yeah, I do. I am aware that the Wago clips are improved, and then again, like I said, it's the Gen 2 with obviously the casing as well, so the yeah. wires are a lot tidier on the inside of the unit. Yeah, that's better. Um, so there shouldn't be no issues with you know loose cables dangling over the tamper sensor. I, I was just looking at the old unit, and it looks like um, the line conductor on the Wago is like what burnt, but there's also like the line conductor that goes through the CT into like the PCB module, or is that like a known issue that's been resolved now? Yes, exactly. Yeah, this Gen 2, uh, that's another thing, that is the PCB um, on the bottom, uh, that little battery yeah. looking thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that thing as well, that's, that should be an updated model too. All right, All right. cheers, Chris, you're a legend, mate. Thanks yeah, very much. Adam. Cheers. Bye 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 bye. Bye bye. Chris Indra, super helpful. Thank you. So, this is the Gen 2 model now. Improvements have been made, as he said. We've got the new PCB at the back, so that old issue is no longer a thing. The Wago connectors have been improved. We have an RFID back panel here, which is a new feature. And when I speak to them later on, when I commission this, we'll find out a bit more about that. But all in all, they've installed this new plastic plate, which, mobile phone, hello. Yeah, all right, bye, bye, bye. Miss is picking up the dog from the groomers. So we've got this new back plate here, which prevents any issues with the tamper as well and clean and clear cable routing. Love it. So this install is right by the sea. So there's a lot of salt in the air and this has held up absolutely perfectly. So a good bracket that you can rely on. New stuffing gland. I don't like to reuse the old stuff. Here comes the rain. I need to get on with this. Hiya. Hi. Filming in public is always fun. And then because of the D-line clips, I can get this installed super quick, which is perfect when you work in England. Can't take the front cover off this because your socket is pre-wired. So you just gotta put up with it hanging about but you can sort of wedge it in like that. Now it's whether I've left my cores long enough to follow their route or not. And that's the thing you've got to watch out for when you're installing chargers. Never make the cables as short as it possibly can. Give them some length because if you end up in a situation like this, you may need the extra length. If they move the terminals about, which I haven't in this one, but they've got these fancy clips. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use them. I haven't been able to use the clips in their preferred order and that's purely because it's not a new install and I've just got to use the cable length that I've got. These are the clips. Look, I appreciate this is not dressed in nicely, but this is the only way I could get it with getting my CT cable in a clip by running in the lowest one, which was actually supposed to be for the live conductor. But I've managed to get it all connected up. All the cables are relatively secure. But if it was a new install, it would look far better and you could do a nicer job. But it is what it is at this stage. It's still gonna work the same. I need to get this cover on because it's frying it down. I'll catch up with you in a minute.
Let's turn her back on and run through the testing. The charge is tested through fine and I've carried out a visual inspection on the protective devices inside the consumer unit to make sure there's no signs of burning or arcing, it's absolutely fine. So before, one thing that may have been frustrating to you if you installed any of the older Indras a year or so ago was the commissioning process. It was a bit of a pain, but now they've got a brand new installers app which makes the process basically seamless and it's way easier. And this is what it looks like. You just need to follow the instructions. It's dead easy. I do like a proper video on this another day. The weather's just too bad for this. I've got Amanda on the line on technical and she's going to explain about the RFID. Go, Amanda. Right, so the RFID is not currently active. However, when this function is active, it means if a customer has a MENA or All Star account, then that account will directly link up. Perfect. Okay. All right, you're going to be famous, Amanda. Thanks very Thank much. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for your help. Okay, take Cheers. care. Bye, 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 bye. Amanda, thank you. So that's this one all wrapped up and done. The only thing I will say is that I do get a warranty payment for this, but it's not a lot. And if you take into account the entire time that I've taken to do this, which includes the initial site visit, identifying the fault, organizing the new charger, and then a return visit, swapping over the charger, and then I've got to then spend more time organizing, returning the charger. The warranty payment really isn't worth doing it, but I'm always gonna do it because I wanna provide the best service I can for my customer. So it swings and roundabouts, it is what it is, and it's better than nothing. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is edit this whole video and see how long it is and whether I'll include the Anderson in this one or do that as a separate one, because I don't wanna make this video too long. And if the Anderson turns out to be really involved, I don't want you to skip past it. So just in case, thanks for watching and subscribe to my channel.